Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead for porch time today. So I want to take a little bit of time and I want to thank all y'all for your patience with us as we was doing our live streaming. Let y'all know that we lost our computer and that it had it went down. There was a glitch in the system here. We had a power outage and it done something to our computer and we we lost the computer, lost some of the stuff that we had on it, and we're trying to go back and retrieve that now. And we had to buy a new computer, which has been kind of a little bit difficult for us because it's Windows 10 and we were not used to Windows 10. So we've had to start downloading programs on it and try to figure out a lot of stuff. I mean, our computer actually went out at four o'clock on Saturday afternoon. We had to jump in the vehicle, run to town, buy a computer, a laptop. Now when I say computer, y'all have to understand we don't do the the mouse and the towers and stuff like that. We use laptops. We don't, that's all we use here. And we bought a new laptop, came back, and, and had to completely boot this thing up, get our information in it, and actually to get it up and try to get it going before our eight o'clock, because we, we didn't get back home with it, you know, until after five o'clock and then we had to try to start getting all this stuff done we didn't have time to download obs and all that kind of stuff so we tried to do hangout and it kept streaming on us the internet system was giving us trouble here the uh internet people's been out daily working on the lines out here all the time so we're, we're having a lot of issues with that so i just want to tell you all i appreciate your patience and we're trying to come up with the a new program where we can download some stuff uh, into the computer and be able to do live streaming a little bit better than what we were doing. Now, today on Porch Time, I want to talk about still about building community because really that is my goal is to is to build this YouTube community. And since I've started this goal, I've had more trouble with the internet system. I've had more trouble from the devil. He is not wanting me to do this for some reason and all that's doing is fueling me to make me do it that much more so if y'all will bear with me through this i want to build a community of people of good people that we can get information from each other we can help each other out as a matter of fact i'm going to show you a clip here in just a minute we had a fellow youtubers that's been coming to our property here we had um Ms. one of my subscribers, Miss Melody, she came. She um, got some blueberries from us. She got some chickens from us. And then you're also going to see Addie girls. They came and spent an all day Sunday with us. We was able to help them, show them around our homestead here, show them what we do. They were taking pictures of everything, which I don't mind. And we was able to answer some of their questions. We talked about some of their goals and different things and just visited with them through the afternoon. We had a meal with them, enjoyed good Christian fellowship with fellow subscribers. And that's what, here on our homestead, that's what we're all about in, as, in building our community. Hi there, Fred Stanley, my wife, Nicole. Addie Girls Homestead, uh, over visiting with Mr. Danny and Miss Wanda today. They've been gracious enough to invite us over and tour the homestead and hopefully we can ask some questions and get some answers and just enjoy the fellowship. And we appreciate them opening their home to us and sharing their knowledge. It, it rust is right. out. Or if I go with me a terracotta one coming up and going through here, it'd be for the rest of my life. Right. Man. I won't have to worry about it. It'll just be gone. So on your firebox, how did, the construction of it, and of course I know you went through that on your on your video. Yeah. All I did was dug a hole in the ground, and these are just bricks. I just laid them down, and where the holes is at in them, uh -huh. I just drove a, I bought a piece of uh, conduit, galvanized conduit, and I just drove it down through the hole every so often down through them, even on this. Done the same thing up there, and then I put a piece of plywood up under it and blocked it up. And built me a little form on top of it and i poured that top. right on top of it and then once it was cured i went and took the plywood out from under it i built me just a little door right here out of a piece of galvanized 
Um, what I like about it, you don't have to worry about a radiator. You don't have to worry about punching a hole in the radiator. All you got to all you got to make sure is that fan belt is on there because that thing blows some kind of air. And keep all your and ducting keep clean. The, you know, fans around the, the ball blue book clean. or whatever it's called. You know, went away from it, but I do it. And ain't never had no issues with it. So you make your own decision on what you're doing. Well, I want to do that. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, and everybody I've seen that's done it has had no issue. But yeah. I, I never did understand what the issue was. Well, or it was supposed to be. Well, what it is, a lot of people think that the squash will just be mushy and you can't do nothing with them. Well, if you cook a squash fresh, yeah, it's so still it mushy. Yeah. So what Wanda does is she she uses them in her hush puppies and cornbread and stuff like that. She mixes it all in with it. it works great for us. It's and put them in a jar is a way for us to keep them without having to keep a deep freeze running. There you go. Now we have more fellow YouTubers coming this week coming this weekend and next week to spend some time with us here. And I'm gonna tell y'all, that is a joy to Wanda and I because this is a dream of a ministry that we've had and, and that's just it's just thrilling our heart that we're able to uh, to help people here on our homestead. And I just want to let y'all know that that's our goal. Whenever we do our programs and we do our YouTube channels we're trying to reach out to everybody and we're trying to help as many people as we can with answering as many questions as we can about homesteading, about gardening, and different things on the homestead here that we do. Um, and I notice y'all, the no see are about to eat me up sitting here on this swing. They have just been bad in this humidity and rain we've been having this morning. And I just want to tell y'all that uh, you know, we're still working on our web page. We have that up. Uh, we're be quickly becoming affiliates with several different companies, and we're trying to get that on our web page. We're having a little bit of a problem. We've got a Google map that's not wanting to load. Um, we're going to get that figured out. Um, I have several reviews coming up on equipment that different companies have sent me that I think are really beneficial for a homestead. Uh, these, these companies just picked me out and I'm, I'm excited about doing this. Uh, I guess the sad part about it is I had some videos already made and when the computer crashed I lost them. We didn't get them over to the hard drive before I lost them. I'm going back now trying to see if I can retrieve those and if not I'll just have to make new videos. But um, we've got the reviews coming up on some of my videos. We've got uh, we've got videos about frugal quick tips coming up. We've got um, animal updates coming up. We've got gardening updates coming up. We've got canning coming up. We've got, uh, gosh, we've got a whole library of videos building at this particular time that we're working on. Um, we're, what we're doing is we're actually going back looking at our old videos trying to see what which videos has the highest views and it kind of tells us about the direction that y'all are wanting us to go in. That's that's basically what we're doing at this time. So, you know, if you've got any videos that you'd if you'd like to see us do, um, in the comments down below, be sure and put that down there. Let us know what your interests are and what you'd like to see us do videos on, and we will try to do that on a homestead. If there's a something going on on your homestead that you need answers for and would like to see a video on then put that down below in the links and we'll hey we'll see if we can get that up and get it for you if we're doing the same thing here now i've been asked one particular question i'd like to address at this time people that are in our time zone down here and our i'm i'm in zone nine some years some years i'm in zone eight down here and what I want y'all to understand, the reason I say that is, is because of geoengineering going on in our atmosphere, our weather pattern here is changing. If y'all will notice, if you go back and look at some of my videos that were earlier done this spring, you'll notice I mentioned that, that our seasons were two to three weeks early. I noticed some things beginning to happen in January that let me know that our seasons were two to three weeks early this year and it has proved to be correct because here we are at the, in about mid-June we were having August and late July and August weather 
our crops, a lot of them begin to fail extremely early before they actually produced the abundance that we, that we was wanting. Now, a lot of you ask me, when do I need to plant in my particular time zone? What time do you plant what? And all this kind of stuff. Well, the only way I'm going to be able to answer that successfully is to tell y'all to keep an eye on our channel because whenever I go to plant something, I will put it up on my channel. Now, I do plant by the almanac and I do plant on above ground days and below ground days. I do go by those on the almanac. And I try to fit them into my schedule as easy as I can. That doesn't always work out because we may have the wrong kind of weather at that time. So what I do is I read the weather. And as a homesteader, um, one of the things that I, I think that you, to, to be a successful homesteader, you're going to have to do in the day and age in which we live, you're going to have to learn how to read the weather. Um, and that's simply because of geoengineering that's going on inside our atmosphere up here. You know, with, we're being sprayed with chemicals all the time for one reason or other. I don't, I mean, I have my opinions on it, but that's neither here nor there now. But what's happening is it is changing our weather. And it's making it extremely difficult to be able to plant on time and get things out on time. Because it's changing our weather patterns. And what I'm trying to do is, based on what I see going on and what I see happening around me, I base my planting dates on that. And this year, I made a comment. I told Wanda, I said, if we don't plant stuff three weeks early this year, we're not going to have anything. And it turns out that I was exactly right. Because everything that's happening here right now has been three weeks early. The heat came in three weeks early this year. Um, the rain pattern is completely off this year. The temperatures are completely off. There's so much stuff that's off this year that it's making it extremely difficult even for somebody like me who reads the weather signs to try to plant by them that it's even messing with me and I'm not even doing it 100% successful this year. So the answer to that question will be watch my YouTubes and whenever I get ready to plant I will put up the date in which I am planting something. Now I will tell y'all this. This is June the 28th, this video. A four days ago, I planted black eyed peas here on the homestead and I planted my red beans. Now, if y'all are wanting to know, I'm living in time zone nine some years, some years it's eight. This year we're in nine. So I went ahead and planted my, my field black eyed peas and my red beans four days ago. So if y'all want to know when I plant something, I did that, you know, let you, I want to let you know that. So that if any of y'all want to plant some black eyed peas and you're in our time zone, now is the time to do it. If you want to plant red beans, now is the time to try to get that in. Also, I'll put out there, if you want to plant a few squash, you can plant squash right now. The only problem you're going to have with squash right now is we're fixing to go into a stink bug cycle. And what's going to happen is you're going to stink bugs is going to try to mess with your plant some. And the there's another insect that attacks squash this time of the year in this type of heat and humidity. And it's called a pickle worm. This pickle worm will bore holes all in your squash and the worms will live in the inside of your squash and actually eat, them, eat the whole center out of your squash. So those are going to be a couple of insects and squash borers. Now, I'm going to tell you all how I deal with squash borers. When I put my squash plants down, in order to deal with squash borers, I will lay a board down beside my squash plants. Now, I've seen several other ways of doing it, and I've tried them, and I've never really had a lot of success. Some people say you can wrap tinfoil around the base of the plants, and it will keep the squash borers from getting into them. And, and I have had some success with that. I'm not going to knock that because I have had some success. But the main way that I deal with squash borers is I lay boards down beside my squash plants right up against the roots of the plant. And what I'll do is every morning when I get up, I'll go out there and I'll flip those boards over because what will happen is those squash borers will go and get underneath them boards in this heat where they can stay cool. And they'll hibernate under them during the daytime and they'll come out in the evening times and they'll try to eat you, bore into your plants and eat. 
and that kind of helps me to keep the squash borers down on my property here now I don't have a big problem with them I mean I do have some problem but I don't have a huge problem so I want to give you a little update on that um, trying to think of anything else right at this moment we were gathering tomatoes they're coming in one is what we do with our tomatoes this time of the year is we put them in gallon bags after we cut them up and we put them into the freezer and we wait until we have a large amount of tomatoes before we actually do any canning and when we take them out and then we uh, we heat them in a big stainless steel pot or we'll actually use one of our big canning pots and we'll heat those tomatoes up and we'll take them out and we'll run them through a sieve and we'll take the skin and the seeds out that way and we'll have nothing but pulp and juice left and that allows us to go in and make our sauces and you know different things that we need to make with them because uh, we don't can all of our tomatoes right when we harvest them now if we if we got a huge amount of tomatoes at any one given time yeah it would be worth it for us to do that but this year we only planted about I think we have close to 50 plants this year which is not many for what we normally do we normally plant over 100 to 150 plants and that gives us you know that gives us several five gallon buckets every time we pick but we didn't do that this year because we're experimenting with container gardening with tomato plants this year and let's see what else we got going on here we've got peppers are starting to come in our bell peppers our cayennes are starting to come in our jalapenos are starting to come in our red marconi italian peppers are starting to come in what we're doing as a matter of fact today we have cucumbers coming in Wanda is actually making um, relish today uh, she's doing a video on relish we are doing refrigerator pickles we have a video fixing to come out on refrigerator pickles so we have a lot of things coming in at this particular time so we're not able to actually get out and do a lot of videoing like we need to do we video but we can't get the movies out as fast as we're doing them because there's just not enough time to do them. We're, we're so bombarded with everything on the homestead coming in at one particular time. So I think I'm going to end my porch chat there today and just um, say thank you all for taking the time to listen to me. And maybe I'll give you a little information today that was beneficial. And like I said, if you got any comments you know, about what you want to see me talk about, put it in the links below. And I'll try to get that to you, and I'll try to make porch time as interesting as I can and as informational as I can. Thank y'all from Deep South. Home.